friends! Today is going to be my wrap up for the month of August. I had an amazing reading month in August. I read a total of 15 books for a total of 4,388 pages. That is the most books I've read this year but not the most pages because I read some pretty short books but you know what? That's 15 books off of my TBR and I'm pretty happy about that. As always I will start with the lowest rated book and work my way up. There are a few concessions because there's one I didn't rate and there's a few that are all part of the same series and I'm just going to talk about those all at the same time. So moving on. The first book that we're going to talk about is Fantasy Fiction Formula by Deborah Chester. This is a writing craft book. Um, I'm counting it just because I simply did actually physically read the whole thing so I'm counting those pages towards my goal. I read this as part of the craft book chat for Laura Wright's channel. I will link our live show in the description box below as well as in the cards if you'd like to check that out where we talk about the book, how we felt about it, if we think it's worth purchasing and worth reading. You can check out how I felt about that there. So the first with an actual rating is Best Friends Forever by PJ Knight. This is the sixth book in the Creepover series. Um, each book follows a different set of characters in a different story, in a different world. There, none of them are connected. This book in particular follows a young girl whose best friend moves away and a new girl moves to her school and she starts to become friends with this new girl but she has a weird obsession with creepy dolls. I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. This was definitely my least favorite of this series. I did struggle with the reality of it. I guess like the... it's so unbelievable and I, I get that they're mid-grade and they're creepy and they're meant to be unbelievable but I couldn't put myself outside of that belief in order to enjoy the story. You know, sometimes you can suspend your belief and enjoy a story and that just didn't happen for me here. The next book we're going to talk about is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. This book follows four native Blackfeet men and a spirit that is haunting them essentially for something that they did in their past. I give this a 2.75 out of 5 stars. A lot of this book is really well done. It just didn't work for me. Obviously it has great representation for the native Blackfeet tribe but uh, there was a lot of like basketball and cars which I have heard since then is a big part of the native life in America so I guess that makes sense but I felt like it just really broke up the story and didn't really work for the story that was being told. Um, it was extremely gory, uh, high trigger warnings for gore, animal abuse, human abuse. It was, it was, uh, it was not uh, my favorite thing to read. I like horror in the sense that I like things that are scary. I like jump scares. I like scary. I don't like gory. And this was definitely the latter. I don't know if that's a thing like with all horror stories or if I have so far been able to avoid really gross out horror gory books but yeah. So it didn't work for me. But again I think it's well done and it's well written and so if you like gory horror novels it'll probably work for you. Next is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. This was our group book for the most recent AuthorTube chat book club. I will link both Kate's live show and my own for our scheduled live show. Kate and Becca went ahead and did the live show. I was uh, having a bit of a, a personal mental health crisis so I did not feel comfortable being on screen at that time so I let them go ahead and do it because we'd already planned everything and it was like a last minute decision on my part and I then did a stream last week with Cache Warren and I will link that as well. So you'll have two different live streams that you can watch for both how Becca and Kate felt about it and about how Cache and I felt about it. I gave this a three out of five stars. This story follows a few different women, one younger, one older, one kind of middle age, and it walks through this world that they live in where every few years there's some kind of big earthquake type event 
where it puts their entire world into just complete survival mode. It, uh, you know, the plants die, crops die, animals die, and they have to continuously stock up and save and plan for this to happen because they know that it's going to happen because it continuously does. And the biggest part of this is us following the main character, which is the older character, and the book opens up with her finding her young son has been beaten to death by his father, and that is part of you know that has happened and then the earthquake thing happens and everything just kind of starts to fall down around her from there. I have a lot of thoughts and feelings about this. As I said you can check the book chats. They are very spoilery but if you want to know how I felt about it and like with all the spoiler thoughts you can check that out. I think that this was really well done. The writing is impeccable. The world building amazing. I struggled connecting with the characters. I don't think it's because the characters were poorly done. I think it's because I as a fantasy reader was like all over the the world building and the magic system and trying to figure out everything that was going on in the world and I kind of forgot that I was supposed to connect to the characters and so I just kind of didn't do that and I also I struggled with the second person there is second person but I understand why it was done and I think it was done well it just I struggled with it a little bit uh, my main question was like if it's in second person so everything is me because it's you did this, you did that. Why do I have no idea what's going on in this world? If if it's me, I should know, but I don't know. And that was the thing that I struggled with a lot. And so for me, that hurt the pacing of the book because it was me trying to figure everything out. And so I have issues with the book, but I think there are a lot of really great things in it that you can take from it. I probably need to read this a second time, but I am going to continue on with the series. Uh, because I do like what I did get from it. It just, the delivery method didn't necessarily work for me. Next we're going to talk about Awakening, The Coven, Blood Witch, and Dark Magic, all by Kate Tiernan. Uh, this is a couple of the books I have loaned the other book out since then. Uh, if you've heard me ever talk about these on my channel, there are 15 books, each of them sorted into three. They've been re-released with three in each volume. So I'm up to the second volume, fifth book. Yeah, I rated all of these between a three and a 3.75 stars um, of the ones I've read this month. So that was for this month. The series follows a teenage girl named Morgan as she discovers that she is a witch and she joins this coven and she finds out that there are a lot of things about her magic that she didn't know and as the story progresses she learns more about her life that she didn't know and it just is like a really fun 2000s witchy book. If you were a teenager in the 2000s this book is about a teenager in the 2000s so it's like total nostalgia. I'm, I think she's like a junior in high school when I would have been a freshman so a lot of like flip phones and pagers and just stuff that was really big in that time period is all in here so it's super fun to read because you kind of get that nostalgia flashback of it as well. Um, I like the way that the magic has been done so far. Uh, I just I really love the 2000s witch books like they have the best magic feel so far that I have found other than um, the Isabel Sterling books that I read earlier this year. 2000s witchy books are my jam. I think one of the best things about these is that they are super quick. Most of them are between like 150 and 225-ish pages. They revolve a lot around romance, friendships, family, and they have a lot of drama. So they're a good time. Next we're going to talk about The Lost Man by Jane Harper. This book starts off following two brothers who are basically standing in the middle of the desert with their third brother dead at their feet. This book is about figuring out what happened to their brother, whether something insidious happened to him or whether it was just the elements and where they live. Jane Harper is well known for writing her books where the elements and the nature and the life around the people is also basically a character in and of itself and this book is no different. I gave this a four out of five stars. I really love the way that she writes her setting as a character. It is one of the best parts of her books. It makes you feel like you're there. Uh, the characters were really well done and I, I love the, the, there's like a twofold mystery because again it's not just did he do something to go out into the desert on his own and die or did someone kill him? Do you know? You don't know if someone did kill him. Who was it? Uh, it's a very interesting mystery in that aspect and it deals a lot with families and just 
the dynamic of people who have been ostracized from from their entire world. There's a lot of family dynamics. There's a lot of um, talking about just where they live and the they basically live in the deserts in Australia where your closest neighbor is a three hour car drive away. It's very remote. Uh, there was some trigger warnings for this one and I'm going to read these directly from my Goodreads review. Um, things you should know before going in. Uh, this book does deal with the abuse cycle and how those who are hurt tend to hurt. Uh, there's talk about both spousal and child abuse that nothing is expressly described on the page. Rape is mentioned a few times but it's not described on page but it is brought up so know that that's there. Um, there's also a really gruesome like dog death that's talked about. Again it doesn't happen on page but is talked about a few times during the book. There's also a lot of talk of killing uh, kangaroos and dingoes throughout the book. Nothing is graphically described on page but it's brought up more than once. So if any of those things are an issue for you, definitely skip this one. Next is Lobizona by Romina Garber. This book is about a young girl named Manu who has always kind of been sheltered in this apartment that she lives with her mother and an elderly lady who she considers her grandmother but is actually just someone that her mom has met and has taken them in. And she knows that she is illegal in the United States. She knows that that is one of the reasons why her mother keeps her so close is because she doesn't know, she doesn't want anything bad to happen to her because they are illegal immigrants. And also there's something really weird with Manu's eyes. And she basically has to wear sunglasses all the time because if she shows her eyes to the world, then people start to question things. And Manu has always told that her mother her mother has always told her that she has her father's eyes and so that is like the one thing of her father that she has because her mother has told her basically that her father is dead, that her father's family didn't want them to get together and because of that is another reason why they hide. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. I love the character work, the character growth that is done throughout this book is amazing. There were some really interesting romances that I did not expect which were awesome. There is a lot of societal and political issues in this, which you know is my jam in books. I love. The book really is about Manu discovering who she is, becoming empowered, um, growing and learning that not everything she's always been told is true and also that she has more power than she believes she has. And I think Romina wrote this in a way to not put words into her mouth, but I think the ideal is for you to get the feeling that um, the the werewolf thing is supposed to in some point show the way that illegal immigrants are treated in the United States. It's meant, it's, it's a thing, okay? Like there's a parallel and it's using fantasy to express and explain the way that the real world works. Okay. Um, I will say that if that's your thing, also, um, The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, same deal, uses fantasy to explain how the real world works. These things work for me. I like them. I really enjoyed this book. I need to pick up a copy. I'm excited to read the next book. Um, I, I'm, I'm super excited for it. I think that there's going to be some great things coming in the future of this book and I'm just so happy. Next is The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. This is about a girl who when she was younger was at an all-girls sleepaway camp and the three girls that she was rooming with in her cabin all vanished. They haven't been found. It's been 20 years and the owner of the cabin has asked her to come back as a counselor and she decides to go back to kind of discover what happened to the girls. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. Uh, the last chapter plot twist, my friends, the very last chapter plot twist was amazing. So good. Uh, one thing about Riley Saker is that he does tend to do like multiple uh, twist endings. So like there's a plot twist and then it plot twists and then another pivot and then a plot twist. And I, this was definitely no exception. Like you think you know what's happening but then as the story progresses you're like, oh wait, no, actually. And he's really good about writing in multiple plot twists in the last like eighth of the book so that when you think you've gotten the final conclusion, 
you haven't and that definitely had this as well. I loved the dual timeline. I loved the blend of the timeline where there's a certain part in the book where you think you're in one timeline but like the last sentence of it tells you that you were actually in the other timeline. Well done. Super well done. Loved that. I did not guess again did not guess the ending for this at all. Uh, it was uh, not what I had expected at all. There were things going on that I didn't see, especially again the last chapter plot twist. Never saw that coming. So if you like Riley Sager and you haven't read this one, pick it up. This is probably maybe my favorite. It was of the two that I had read at this point because I've read more since then but of the two that I had read up to this point which was this one and Lock Every Door definitely this one like so much better than Lock Every Door so great book. Next is The Lost City and the Morning Flower both by Amanda Hawking. I gave both of these a 4.25 out of 5 stars. They were arcs that I needed to read that I probably read after they were published but I've since ordered them. They're just not here yet waiting on them. This series follows Ula Tulin who is a troll. It is part of Amanda Hawking's larger troll series so if you're familiar like this is the first book of the Trills trilogy, this is the first book of the Canon trilogy, and then the next trilogy is the Omptic Origins trilogy. Obviously I've read them all because I have them. Um, this is classic Amanda Hawking. Uh, the story again follows Ula and she is trying to discover who she is. She was adopted as a child. She doesn't really know who her parents were. She has like one little story of who her mother was um, that the people that left her, that her mother left her with, have told her over the years. But other than that she doesn't really know anything and she gets this opportunity to go to this really, um, this highly under guard village where they have a lot of information about um, their past and their origins and she goes there to try to discover who she is. As always with Amanda Hawking, great characters, a lot of political and societal issues. They have the cutest romances, great mysteries, uh, super fast paced, the world building is good, they are a really fun read. I really love Ula's character, she's one of the most fun characters that I've read in a while. Um, I really just loved reading her. It's really fun to watch her go through the things that she's going through and like how she reacts to them. There's a lot happening and she takes it all in in stride and it's really fun to watch her take in everything. And also you do get some snippets and pieces of characters from the original two series. Though it's been a long time since those series came out so I didn't remember a lot of it. I had originally intended to reread those series before I got to this part of the year. It hadn't happened yet. That's okay. I'm, there's enough in here that I figured it out. Okay. Next is Ghost Town, the first book in the Sarah Normal series by Phoebe Rivers. This book is about a young girl who is moving to a new town. She can see ghosts. They don't talk to her, they don't really interact with her, but she's always been able to see them. It's kind of weird. When they move to this new town, she finds out that there are ghosts everywhere in this new town. And there's one who happens to talk to her and she can actually hear him. And so she's wondering like, what's going on? Why can I hear this guy? Why do I have this ability? And it's just a really short, cute mid-grade about Sarah who can see ghosts. I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is a great paranormal mid-grade book. I do continue to read on in this series. I do continue to read on. I do plan to read on and continue this series uh, because it does actually follow her through all of the books. Unlike the Creepover series where it's a different character set through each novel, this series follows Sarah. So excited to read these. And finally we have one of my new favorite books of all time, The Bookish Life of Nita Hill by Abby Waxman. I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. It was amazing. This book follows Nina who is has always been a loner. She grew up with just her and her mom and her mom has never really been a part of her life. She kind of just had a nanny and her mom has been all over the world and didn't really have a whole lot to do with her. And she works at a bookstore. She has a couple of friends. She's part of a trivia club and she's happy. Like that's enough for her. And one day a lawyer shows up and is like, hey Nina, guess what? Um, your dad recently died and you have a whole slew of siblings, nephews and nieces, great nephews and nieces, and multiple generations of 
family members that you didn't know that you had. And this story follows Nina trying to put these people into her life in a way that makes sense because she doesn't really want them in her life. But once she starts to meet them and like them, she's trying to figure out how to put them into her overly constructed life and to make everything work for her. I love Nina. She's super fun to read. She has like my anxiety, which is great. I was able to relate to her. I swooned so hard over the love interest in this. He is amazing. I think Nina's family is absolutely ridiculous and I loved it. Like they are so dysfunctional. It's great. Uh, one of my favorite things about this book is Nina's dad who she's never met. She didn't know who her dad was her entire life and then finding out that it was this much older man who has children both decades older than her and younger than her. And so she's really getting to experience her dad through her siblings and through his previous wives who are still living, some of them. The thing is that she's hearing all these conflicting stories and it's really not because her dad really treated any of them any differently or went out of his way. It's because we change so much as a person throughout our lives. And each of these people were close to him at a different point in his life. So they all really have this different idea of who he was as a person. And so Nina's getting all these different viewpoints of her dad when really all of it's her dad. It's not any one specific person or any specific time period that was her dad it's all of it was her dad it's a very interesting to look at humans and how we grow and evolve just one single human how we grow and evolve throughout our lifetimes if we're lucky enough to live into our 70s or 80s as Nina's father has very interesting viewpoint I think one of my favorite lines from this book is part of the romance and that is being with you is as good as being alone I think for someone like me who loves to be alone, like that's what I look for in the real world is like a person, any people, whether it's a romantic relationship or platonic friendship, if it's someone that it's as good as being alone, you get the same feelings, you're as comfortable as you are when you're alone, like that's the kind of people that I search for, that's the kind of people that Nina searches for. So very good book. Love this very, very much. So these are some of the books that I read this month. If you would like to discuss any of these books, if you've read them or if you have more questions about if you should read them, please hit me up in the comments below. That's why I'm here. That's why you're here. If you want to know more of my full thoughts, as always, I will link my Goodreads reviews in the description box below. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, and book related videos, Mondays, Wednesdays, bonus videos on the weekends, sometimes when I actually feel like posting. I keep to a schedule, but not really. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you subscribe. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.